Welcome back. I was describing to you the Palestinian influence on the New Testament, especially the writings of the Qumran community and Yosefus attest to the genuineness of all those writings. Now, I would like to briefly explain to you the Easter season readings which have a special structure. Easter season from the Easter Vigil Mass onwards, there are readings with very special uh, references. The first one, the Easter week itself, the various apparitions of the risen Lord, which I already described to you. Altogether, there are 12 of them in the New Testament. In the, About eight, nine of them are from the Gospels and the others from the New Testament. So, those especially given by the New Testament as appearances are really valuable to prove that Jesus risen alive and appeared to so many. There are 12 such apparitions, if you follow one numbering, uh, there are certain doubts regarding whether two appearances given in the Bible are perhaps the same from two aspects, but doesn't matter. That's not a very important one. It ends with the appearance to St. Paul. He was uh, actually called by Jesus himself and uh, you are familiar with that conver conversation. So that will be the twelfth appearance of the risen Lord. I am not going to repeat what I already said. So remember there are twelve apparitions and all the twelve, if you somehow keep in mind in that order, especially remember the first five happened on the Easter day itself. The sixth one will be on the eighth day when St. Thomas also was present. From there onwards, all the other ones. Keep this in mind because they are proofs for the resurrection of Jesus. Today, I would like to continue with that one. The second Sunday of uh, Easter season, where St. Thomas was present and he confesses his faith in the risen Lord in those famous words, my Lord and my God. With that, perhaps the church began to grow. And the, during the week, the readings that we are given are all about baptism. The reason is this. If you want to take part in the benefits of the resurrection, the first thing that you should have is baptism. And therefore, the church places before us that conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus, where Jesus explains about what baptism is, which is a very important document in a way. So that part is, you know, the second week, so to say, and there we are asked to reflect on the meaning, relevance, importance of baptism, through which we enter the life of Jesus, where God's life, Jesus' life, enters in us through baptism. And it is by that that we are privileged to obtain the benefits of the resurrection. The third week, third Easter week, is all about the Eucharist. The third Sunday we have the gospel about the Emmaus disciples who recognize Jesus at the breaking of the bread. Jesus accompanied them on the way. They did not realize that it was Jesus, but at the breaking of the bread, they recognized him, and that way the Eucharist becomes 
that which enables us to meet Jesus face to face, to recognize Jesus face to face. In Cologne, in Germany, there is a church with a beautiful, meaningful door. The door has four panels, four decorated panels. And the first panel shows the six stone jars recalling Jesus changing of water into wine. That was in a way the first miracle that is reported and that was pre-telling or already enabling us to realize what the Holy Eucharist is. The second panel is about the feeding of the 5,000 and there the promise Jesus makes, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. A second very important word about the Holy Eucharist. The third panel is about the Last Supper where the Holy Eucharist is instituted. What was just promised by Jesus, I will give this bread, that bread he gave in the Holy Eucharist. And the fourth panel is about the Emmaus disciples who recognize Jesus at the breaking of the bread. This work of art, in a way, is an excellent summary of the Holy Eucharist. It recalls the prefiguring at Cana. It shows the promises made at Capernaum. It gives us the words of the institution at the Last Supper in Jerusalem and it was first celebrated in, at Emmaus. The Holy Eucharist is now the way the risen Lord is with us. We may not really pay attention to this aspect, but I personally feel this is a very valuable statement. Today, the risen Lord is with us through the Holy Eucharist. And his presence is given to us through the Holy Eucharist. The risen Lord lives with us, lives amidst us, lives within us through the Holy Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist then becomes the means by which the risen Lord is with us. The fourth Sunday, just the last Sunday, the fourth Sunday is called the Good Shepherd Sunday and the fourth and fifth week we have those famous I am statements given by St. John. There are seven very clear statements where Jesus says I am, I am, I am. I will just give the list of the famous I am statements. The first one is I am the bread of life. That is in John chapter 6 35. The second one I am the light of the world. John 8 12. I am the gate for the sheepfold. John chapter 10 7. I am the Good Shepherd, John 10, 11. I am the Resurrection and the Life, John 11, 25. I am the Way, the Truth and the Life, John 14, 6. I am the Vine, John 15, 1, 15, 5. These seven statements are in a way answer to the question, who is this Jesus? And Jesus himself answers in this way. I will stop with this. I will continue next week more or less with the same thought 
about the I am statements.